and this is the pedal mess stock. I said, we never know what we're going to use. So usually there's way more pedals than this. But this, the M9 by Line 6, <laughs> has a million sounds. A million. A million sounds. So uh, now I don't have to take a million pedals wherever I go. I can just take a few and use the, the uh, stop modeler, man, because it's awesome. Okay. Let's look at the amplifiers. Let's start over here. This is a 1976 Marshall JMP. And you're saying, well, it doesn't say Marshall on it. Now, it usually has a face like this that goes in front. But this amp runs really hot. And uh, I took off the front so it would stay cooler, which it worked. And this is my dad's barbecue grill from the shed. That, uh, and I swear to God, this is, a sh this is a barbecue grill. And it protects the tubes and makes it a little wobbly, but um, it stays cooler. And this amp sounds awesome for everything. Like, it sounds amazing. Get great AC-DC tones, Led Zeppelin tones, put a couple of pedals in there, and you get your metal tones, everything. So, uh, there you go with that. This is, it looks old, but it's, it's a newer, it's a Plexi clone. A friend of mine in uh, Toronto, Lou Ripoli, built this. We call it Big Red because it's red, and I love the red. I want to get a cabinet that matches, but I can't find one anywhere. Um, so this is what Lou did. It's like a, it's a, like a traditional Plexi, and he, he went according to 1969 specs. But what he did was he, he put a volt a voltage uh, tap on the on the power transformer, right? And so when you go up, when it's in standby in the middle, and when you go up, it has your traditional AC-DC kind of tones, and then when it goes down, it, uh, it goes from 500 volts to 400 volts, and it sounds more like Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> All in one amp, man! Now, there's always a compromise, but in this case, both sounds are awesome, and it's killer. Okay, this, these are the two amps that I actually use live. I use the Kasha when I play with powder, because I need like a modern rock sound, and I use the Gibson when I play with uh, the drills because it's more of a, a it's, it's kind of like a classic tone but it's got a little more fur and girth so and this only has three knobs and it's amazing and what I do is I take the Gibson and I go into the ultimate attenuator and uh, which is like a power soak or a hot plate by THD and the amp is 40 watts and really loud so what I do is uh, it's on 10 and that's my lead tone and then with a foot switch, I can switch it to where it's soaking a little bit. So I soak maybe like 40 to 60 percent, and that's my rhythm tone. So and that's what I do live. In the studio, it's just everything's on 10, and it doesn't matter because you don't have to worry about volume, and it kicks ass. And we recorded it yesterday with the P94 guitar, and it sounded amazing. And then we used my Les Paul and Zakashi yesterday and got the biggest rock tone ever. And then you blend the two together, and you got the wall of rock! Yeah! Okay, and here, this is a PV Classic 100 is which uh, I don't I took the PV sign off because I I don't know why I, it broke that's right it fell off one day so this has a really it has two channels and it's got a really nice clean channel and it's got a really nice dirty channel and I think I like it better than the 5150 because it doesn't sound as grainy so that's why I use this for some rock songs um, and below it is a Bogner Alchemist which has a really excellent I haven't really dealt with the, the dirty channel a lot but what I do is I take everything on the clean channel and put everything on 10 and you get a really nice rock t sound going on and then if you want it really clean you can kind of back off the gain and, 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 uh, and play with that and uh, combos! we got some combos! okay walk with me bye Paul see you guys this is where we record acoustic guitars right here. This is a Gibson J200. And I sit in that chair, because you have to sit so you can't move too much. And you use that microphone. And hey, I'll give you a little lesson about recording acoustic guitars. Because what I do, it's all about placement. A lot of people swear that you should put the microphone around the 12th fret. And I, we found out yesterday that it's closer to the 15th fret, because you get a little more body and a little more attack which I think it all depends on how you play, but how I play, it really sounded amazing yesterday. So there we go. And, okay, we'll save the best for last. The heads go in either this Marshall 412, which has 75 watt speakers in it, 
And you'll notice this is a 57. Everybody's seen the 57 before. The, one, the microphone right beside it is a ribbon mic. Now, if you don't like the high-end kind of like crazy you get from a 57 sometimes, you put a ribbon mic on the same speaker and you can blend the two together so you get the sweet highs from the 57 and some low girth from the uh, Royer ribbon mic. Um, girth is the word of the day. Come on! Okay, it either goes into the Marshall 412 or the head might go into the Bogner Alchemist cabinet because it's an open back cabinet with, with green backs in it. So you get two completely different sounds. So that's what we've been rocking. Also have a matchless right here, which is sick. Both channels. Both channels are sick. Um, we have a clean channel that sounds amazing clean, or you can crank it the fuck up. <laughs> and uh, it sounds great dirty. This one, the channel two, you have a little more play. Um, and you can get a lot of uh, really cool rhythm tones. Like You can go from really honky, depending on what you want to sound like. You can get all kinds of stuff out of it. It's really killer. The Ampeg has... This vintage kind of, and it is vintage, I think it's an Ampeg, I don't even know, it's an a Gemini 112. This thing has this thing, it's just magical, it sounds really, really cool. Um, I can't even describe. It's got this mid-range that if you, on its own it sounds good, and blended with another amp it sounds good too. Yes, <laughs> that's what my thought was. And, uh, okay, over here we have an even smaller amp, this is a... a a blue, a Pro Junior? Yeah, Fender Pro Junior. And it's got one speaker in there, and it's got two knobs, a volume and a tone. We set it at 12 o'clock, and if it needs to be cleaner, we turn it down, and if it needs to be dirtier, we turn it up. And sometimes you can add a little compression or a really cool fuzz pedal and get some really, really cool, um, you know, alternative tones. And I know everybody's waiting for the Tone Master, it's over here. <laughs> This is the Tone Master, baby. This is my little, my little secret weapon. Um, it's got 112 in it. People ask the model number, so I'm going to tell you right now. It's a custom 214 Imp by Imperial Accordion Company, and Incorporated, Chicago, Illinois. All right, 15 watts, two channels, and I imagine that's what it means. I think the 214 stands, stands for two channels and uh, 14 watts, I think. Um, and one thing we don't do at Fred, Amer Fred at Americana, because we like to keep everything effect less, is this amp has an amazing vibrato. Like, it's got speed and depth, intensity, which totally, like, it sounds awesome. Um, I'm trying to be even more descriptive, but I don't think I can. I left all my adjectives at home. But um, in the meantime, this is the big room. Uh, Today it's just guitars. Sometimes we have a whole band in here, so the drums are set up here. And then uh, the cabinets will go in another room, in there. And um, I'll be standing here rocking out, bass player sitting down over here with all his basses. Um, sometimes there's a keyboard or piano player in here, because there's a grand in there. And, and uh, I think that's it, man. And it's, when we're not playing, we're like driving our Vespas around in here. <laughs> No, man, I don't, I don't ride a Vespa. Okay, I think that's it, man. Woo! All right, that's the quick Philex tour. If you have any comments, questions, I'll answer whatever you want, man. And all you haters, stay away. Thanks, bye.